Hi, and hello friends. Spirulina, let us learn how to eat a rainbow. People eat, not only with their mouth, but, also with, their eyes. This white cake is beautiful and delicious. But, this colorful cake, will attract more attention. Do you want to know, that, there are two types, of food colorant? Which are, natural, and chemical colorant? What is an example, of natural colorant? One of the example source of natural colorant is, spirulina. Let me tell you more about spirulina. It's composed of dried arthrospira also known as spirulina platensis or A. maxima. A gram-negative and non-toxic cyanobacteria. And also an ideal food and quality drug resources. Let's see the morphology of spirulina. It has smooth body surface, multicellular with gas-filled vacuoles, rod-shaped or disc-shaped, has filamentous with helical-shaped filaments, and is a symbiotic bacteria that fix nitrogen from air. In nature, a high temperature up to 39 degree or sometimes 40 degree Celsius doesn't bother them. Spirulina thrives in alkaline and saline water with very high pH. Due to the high pH in the water, spirulina has almost no competitors. This means that it is not fussy regarding the water it needs. Almost all parasites, gems and viruses cannot survive the alkaline environment in which spirulina thrives. Now, let me share with you, where spirulina, can be found. Do you know, spirulina can be found in soil, fresh, water, marshes, and lastly, brackish, water. Hey, want to know more about spirulina? Sure, tell me more. Did you know that spirulina can produce color? But, how is that even possible? Spirulina, contain pigments that can produce colors. Spirulina, can produce blue color from phycocyanin, green, from chlorophyll, red, orange, and yellow from carotenoid. Friends, what do we know about phycocyanin? It exhibits brilliant blue color. It is also soluble in water. Do you know, that chlorophyll, is the most dominant pigment? Chlorophyll, also contains antioxidants and anti-mutagenic elements. Carotenoid functions as photosynthesis aids. They are also used in photoprotection processes. But, how to grow spirulina to suffice market demands? With the development in bioprocess technology, it is possible to upscale production of spirulina. First, let's see requirement needed for growing spirulina. The requirements to grow spirulina are temperature, pH, macro and micronutrients, addition of carbon dioxide, and aeration. To fulfill the requirements, spirulina is grown inside a bioreactor. Bioreactor provides easier control on the requirements for growth spirulina. Hence, a photobioreactor is chosen. In bioprocess technology, photobioreactor is widely used to cultivate spirulina. This is because photobioreactor provides good mixing, continuous harvesting, continuous feeding, temperature control, pH control, and CO2 addition. Aeration is one of the requirements to cultivate spirulina. This is because aeration agitates the growth medium for a better mixture of the spirulina filaments throughout the growth vessel for adequate exposure to lumination. During the process, air bubbles are supplied from the pump to the bioreactor. Second requirement is macro and micronutrient. Nutrients that used to feed spirulina such as carbon, nitrogen, phosphate, potassium and other else are important for rapid growth of spirulina. 
In the process, spirulina consume the nutrients thus producing a byproduct which is glycogen. In addition to aeration and nutrient, temperature also important to give a better yield of spirulina. The optimum temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. Spirulina is an autotroph organism, so it needs light to perform photosynthesis. With the exposure of high luminosity during the cultivation, spirulina able to perform photosynthesis. Not just temperature, spirulina also require an optimum pH. The optimum pH to cultivate spirulina is between pH 8.5 to 10. This level of pH contain large amount of hydroxide ion. So, we can say that growth medium contain high alkaline solution. This give advantage to spirulina since the harmful viruses, germs and parasites cannot survive. Do you know what factor that maintains the pH of the culture medium? The addition of carbon dioxide, help in maintaining the pH of the culture medium. During the cultivation of spirulina, carbon dioxide is supplied from the pump to the photobioreactor. I have no idea how does spirulina reproduce. Do you want to know that spirulina reproduce by binary fission? Let me explain. Binary fission is an asexual reproduction by separation of the body to two new bodies. In the process of binary fission, an organism such as spirulina duplicate its genetic material and then divide into two parts, which each new organism receiving one copy of DNA. Then two become four, four become eight, eight become sixteen and the cycle is continuous. Now, let's see how the pigments from spirulina are separated. To extract pigments from spirulina, disruption methods such as mortar and pestle is required. Mortar and pestle uses force to grind and smash cells. Remember, when using this method, the temperature must be controlled. In this disruption method, first, weight the dry material and put it in the mortar. After that, with a pestle, reduce the dry material in a very fine powder. In the process of pigment solubilization, solvents are required. In this method, ethanol is added to the fine powder in order to solubilize the mixture. Then, colors from the spirulina pigments can be separated by using a technique, named thin layer chromatography. TLC technique consists of two phases, which are stationary phase such as TLC plate from silica, and mobile phase which is solvent, where the components distribute. Then, using a pencil, draw a line at about the bottom of the TLC plate and label a spot at the center of the line. After that, a small spot of solution containing the sample is applied to the plate, before we place the plate into the chamber, and left for a few minutes to let the solvent saturated the air in the chamber. As the time goes by, we can see that the driving forces take the substances away from its point of origin, and move it in the direction of the flow of solvent. We can see the result from this technique where different color from the spirulina is shown. Spirulina pigments are widely used in worldwide. It can be used as a coloring agent for ice creams, hard candies, gummies, frozen confectionery such as yogurt, jello and even capsules. I am very happy, because now, I am able to know more about spirulina. Me too. You know, spirulina is able to play important role via bioprocess technology. So amazing how spirulina, an organism which cannot see with naked eye, can do such thing. Thanks to bioprocess technology, now we know how we can grow spirulina. Let's use more natural colorants. Please share if you agree. Hi, I'm Kimmy. I'm Halifa. And I am Kiara. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like and share the video. Also don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. Goodbye.